Debbie and her children talk in shite. Debbie and her children talk in absolute shite. Welcome to episode three of Debbie and her children talk in shite. Um, talk in shite. Talk in shite. How do you say that in German? Does anyone know? Sprechen Scheiser. Sprechen Scheiser. Sprechen Scheiser. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. Sprechen. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thanks a lot for everyone's messages from uh, episodes two. We had quite a lot of correspondence from our work episode. It's, it seemed to be quite a popular one. And um, again, unbelievably, we have a message for Debbie Jones. Uh, these keep coming through every week. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but it's really odd. No, I think I know what's yeah. going on. So this this week we have somebody called Jerry eight five four from Coventry. Of course you do. Yeah, and he has asked Debbie, is it true at the nineteen ninety two Frankfurter eating contest held in, <laughs> held in Huddersfield <laughs> that you got banned <laughs> that you got banned for life for um for hiding the Frankfurters up your sleeve? Absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely Are you? Ridiculous. Well, I mean, you can you can keep denying these stories if you want, but um, I think certain people out well, there know the truth. These are totally made up stories by uh, questions by you, Andrew. I'm they, well aware of this. I'm they, just letting you know. I promise these are not real. It's really not fair to call these people fictional characters because they are out there History listening. History disagrees. Yes, history disagrees, uh, and um, yes, the proof is in the pudding, and time will tell. Yes, there is no smoke without fire, mm. and any other cliche sentence I can think well, of. Well, that did not happen. I've never even been to a Frankfurter festival, so I wouldn't even know <laughs> where to go for one. Right, so, um, everyone, right. let's introduce everybody as usual. Let's start with Craig. Hello, Craig. Hello. Um, I will try and edit that last word out because that is very rude. So, yeah. Hello, Donna. Uh, yo, peeps. How are you doing? I hope you're all cool today. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. And Stephen. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. And uh, Billy. Hello. And um, and last but not least, the Frank Furter eating maniac machine. That is Debbie. Hello. <laughs> oh, she is giving me some really bad evils. I can tell you. She's Good giving me e she's giving me evils with her ears. <clears throat> <laughs> and bacon earrings. <laughs> like slippers of crispy bacon stuck to her head. <laughs> oh, that's not very nice, is it? Fucking hell. You could oh, you, you could snap talk? those ears off. You could snap those ears <laughs> yeah. off. I yeah. have got really stiff ears. Everyone knows it. My ears are not floppy. And I've often said to people, are you floppy or stiff eared? Because <laughs> Because my ears just feel like they're going to snap off if I move them. It's hey, really mum, mum, what, what do you want? What, what do you want with your ears? Some lettuce and mayonnaise. Oh, very good. Mind you, I, I don't, don't know if that's your strangest uh, body part, Deborah. Do you? Yeah, all right. Let's carry we're on. We're going to do another show. show. So everybody, like we do every week, I'm going to pull out the theme from the Hat of Destiny. Everybody, let's uh, bring on the Hat of Destiny. <laughs> Pull it out, 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 pull it in, pull it out. So this week we have, oh, public transport. Oh, interesting. Oh, hi. I had to get a plane over to Germany and um, I had to sit next to this guy. Um, and he was in like a suit, he was clearly a businessman or whatever. Businessman, can't say business. Um, and so the flight started and we're flying along and a woman comes along and says, do you want a coffee or anything like that? And I was like, yeah, I need a coffee. So I got this coffee and so you get your coffee and you get your sugar and you get your little carton of milk or whatever it is, right? So, so this guy sitting next to you, I'm by the window seat, so I'm all cramped in. And so I've got my sugar, I'm doing that. And then I try to open the milk thing. I can't open the little foil thing on the milk, right? No one can, it's so, so annoying. I'm trying, trying to get it open and I open it and it just spurts out everywhere. But it goes all over the guy next to me. And instead of being like an adult human being, he decides to turn into like a six-year-old child. 
And he looks at me and he goes, he just looks at me and he's like, oh, oh. And he goes, <laughs> I have a meeting. This is <laughs> unacceptable. I have a meeting. And then he looks at the flight attendant and just does the same thing. He's got his, like, his hands out, his eyes wide, like, Goop. and I leaned over. I said, I've got a meeting, mate. And I don't mind having milk all over me. <laughs> oh, but then after I said that, we had to sit next to each other for the next hour in complete silence. <laughs> I remember a time that me and Mum and Andrew had to get a coach from Plymouth to London as we were going to see The Who. Um, we'd been waiting for months, um, cost a lot of money, blah, blah. All excited, right? So we've been going along for about an hour, and I really need a toilet, and which at the back of the coach. Um, and I thought I'd locked the door, um, and I sat down in the toilet, and I realised that the coach must have been going round and round about because, like, what I had to do was basically basically do the splits on the toilet so I wouldn't fall over. I had one leg, oh, one what over there, one so leg. Called anyway, I was sitting opposite the door. <laughs> yes, I've done, I've done, yes, that's right. I've, I've done a Van Damme in the toilet. So I was completely like, yeah. Anyway, a man walked in and saw everything. And I was so shocked. I just went, Mum! <laughs> like that was going to do anything. I just said, Mum! Um, and the man said, sorry, sorry, and I walked out. I had to go down the coach of shame with my head hanging down, knowing that this man saw everything. Yeah. Donna, when when he opened the door, did, did you say... Has mommy come to wipe boo boo? <laughs> <laughs> no, Andrew. Funny enough, I didn't say that. I was on a flight over to you, Craig, in, in America. And I was on a flight, and it was a really long flight, you know, eight hours. And we'd all taken our shoes off and stuff, and they were on the floor. And as we started to land, um, we were all scrabbling about trying to get our shoes off the floor and bag and bits and pieces were left. <laughs> did, you, did you put on somebody else's shoes by any chance? <laughs> it's almost that. It's almost that. Because I went to feel under my seat for my shoes. <laughs> and I was... You didn't put a man's foot behind you. Yes, I was. <laughs> you, know... you went to pull, put your hand under the seat and you was pulling on the man's foot. <laughs> you just pull in all his foot. <laughs> what did he do? Behind me, he was sitting behind me. Basically, he was he being pulled just, underneath. He had his legs stretched out, so his feet were under my seat. So I went to pull my black shoe, and he had black shoes on. I went to pick up my black shoe, and I was pulling the end, the end of his shoe, and I thought, <laughs> and I thought my shoe had got wedged under the seat. <laughs> what you carried on? How long did it go on for? Fucking mum, hell. mum pulled him all the way under the seat. Hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only a minute or two. Yeah. It sounds to me like you was uh, putting that guy's leg. Um, so this was quite a few years ago now. Um, so me and Bill were at the same college for a while. And so everybody who used to um, go to college... If you got the bus at a certain time, the bus would go straight to the college and drop you off there. So that bus at that time was normally filled with uh, all the people going to the college. And so there was this boy there who me and Bill, hadn't, we hadn't really spoke to him. We said like, hello to him and that maybe that was it. Um, and one day me and Bill got on the bus and he was asleep on the back of the bus. and But he was sleeping with his mouth wide open. Um, we took the opportunity to throw whatever we could find into his mouth. I don't know, his little bits of food or some toilet paper or something. But he woke, he woke up and uh, he didn't really know what was going on. And we were just like, oh, you're right, mate. We sort of played it off. And then a few weeks later, there was a photo of him and with Thomas' partner, Steve. And it turned out to be his cousin. So when we met him, <laughs> we had to explain that we were just two little fleas. Oh no! No, no, no! I remember that because I can remember this. 
get together and this boy came and Stephen and Billy came running up to me and said, mum, mum, that's the boy that's normally at the back of the bus with his mouth open and we throw paper in his mouth. Mm. He's lucky he was only throwing paper. When I moved to London when I was uh, 21 with the band, um, I, <laughs> I didn't know... Um, <laughs> I didn't know the tube, uh, the tube that well, and uh, I went down there this first couple of days, and I, I, I mean, it was a kind of a full platform of people, and I was trying to get to Covent Garden, so I tried to seek the most normal-looking person I could to ask whether they knew how I could get to Covent Garden. So I picked out this guy who just had a t-shirt and jeans on. Yep, Mr. Normal, and I went up to him and I said, uh, "Excuse me, mate, I'm trying to get to Covent Garden. Do you know how uh, how I can get there?" And he turned around and looked at me and said, do I look like a cunt? <laughs> Andrew, was it me? <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was the strangest thing. And um, I, I didn't know what to say. I was like, um, well, no, no, you don't. Uh, and then I got on the same carriage as him. And he kept saying throughout the uh, journey, actually, mate, I'm getting off at Covent Garden. Do you want to follow me? Follow me follow me and get off when I get off and follow me. And this guy was a complete fucking lunatic and wow. uh, happened to be the guy that I picked out. Wow. I ended up just saying, actually, you know what? I, I don't think I want to get off at Covent Garden now. I think I'm going to go somewhere else. Andrew, do you remember when me and you, um, I think we'd been out somewhere for the night and we was really hung over and we was on a train. I don't know where we was going. I think it was going back home, whatever. Um, there was a guy in the carriage on the train uh, and every now and then you just hear a snort, you know, rather than blowing oh. your nose, just snorting up and making that disgusting sound. Yeah. It was making me feel so ill and he kept doing it and doing it. And I kept like tutting and like, signing it. And then I think in the end I shouted, uh, why don't you just go and get a fucking tissue? Yes. <laughs> and I, I do remember like, oh, that. Stop. I do remember like, I that. I it's making me feel sick. I do remember that. And, you know, I, I don't I don't blame you at all because there's nothing worse than that. I mean... Oh, how can a movie for everyone? It's gross. It's, oh. it's strange on, on public transport, you really get to know people's manners and stuff. And um, Yeah. Yeah, and the lack of them. So I think it was Steve's, one of Steve's birthdays, and uh, I got really drunk, and I'd shaved my hand, I shaved my head. The, uh, <laughs> shaved your the hand? Prior. <laughs> shaved, shaved my kneecaps. And, uh... <laughs> so you'd, I, so you'd, I, you'd shaved your head, like, completely bald? It was Bic Razor bald, yeah. Bic Razor bald, okay. Bic Razor baldy. And, uh, it was probably, I was still a kid at this time, so I'm sort of get on the tube. And I noticed people are getting up, and I'm thinking, well, they're not getting off. And they were like, you can sit here, you can sit here. I thought, wow, people people are so nice here. And uh, mum obviously then addressed the train, saying that I got drunk and shaved my head and obviously didn't have the obvious. Oh, she told everyone? Yeah, she also did the same when people were letting me in front of the queue at Madame Two Swords. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, good for her for not taking advantage, but many people would have done. So good for her. <laughs> but uh, well, so did did you take advantage of uh, any of the seat offers at all? Mum didn't let me. Didn't allow it. Okay. No. Well, you know that says one thing really is that everyone usually says that London commuters are miserable bastards, but that just proves that they have got a bit of heart when it comes to a sickly ill child. I never, ever, ever fall asleep on an airplane, even if the flight is eight hours, because I'm paranoid that something will happen. The one time I fell asleep on an airplane, I was going over to America, and I actually fell asleep and relaxed, and it was the most brilliant thing. And at one point... Hang on, hang on. Was, was some woman trying to grab your foot from underneath the chair? Is that what happened? <laughs> no, it's worse than that. No. Um, I, I opened my eyes, and the first thing I saw, instead of the cabin, there was a man leaning right in my face like that. And he and before I could do anything, he goes, <laughs> he goes, beef lasagna or spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> 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 
the flight attendant, but he said it with this weird <laughs> grin on his face. Beef lasagna or spaghetti bolognese? It freaked me out. I just went, beef lasagna, beef lasagna. <laughs> anyway, carry on. It was very nice. Greg, I'm going to wake you up one day. I'm going to come to America and wake you up and say beef lasagna or spaghetti. I can still see his face in my mind. I think of it all the time. I was living in Crystal Palace um, and I went and got my shopping at the large Tesco or whatever it was, came out of a trolley full of shopping and they had this little phone just inside the shop where you run for a local taxi. And there always there were always people fighting over taxis when you got outside. That was my taxi. Now it's my taxi. Anyway, I dialed for a taxi. As I came out of the shop with my trolley, <laughs> a taxi from the taxi company that I'd called, called right up. And um, Mum, did you get all necky like that? No, yeah, no, that's I my taxi. Big time. He looked at me and opened the boot. He got out and he looked at me and he opened the, the boot of the car. And I said, Oh, hello, just chatting away. And he was looking at me and I was putting all my shopping in the boot and everything. Um, and as we've more or less finished, um, this lady came up to me and said, Right, what are you doing? And I said, Putting my shopping in the boot of the taxi. And she said, this car for me, and I said, I thought she was arguing, you know, and I said, no, 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 this car's for me, because I just dialed this taxi, and this man was her husband, and he was looking at her when he opened the boot, because she was right behind oh. me, and I thought it was my taxi, so I started, and he <laughs> thought that she was, a, I was a friend of hers, and he was giving me a lift as well, but no one had spoken at all, and I had to, she said, I said, this is my taxi. And she said, this is my husband. And I said, <laughs> oh, I'm so, so sorry. And all my oranges had fallen out of the bag and apples are everything in his boot. And I had to, with all the dignity I could muster, I had to <laughs> get all the shopping back out and put it all back in the trolley and go and wait. My son, Jimmy, you know, he's got autism and, uh, you know, he's nuts. And when he was younger, he was nuts. And he would not, when he was six years old, he would not get on the bus unless he had a dirty sock with a piece of string tied to it. And then if he had that, we could get on the bus. <laughs> so if I had to go shopping, I'd have to find a dirty sock and a piece of string. And I knew I was in luck. We could, we could go, yeah. Did it have wow. to be a dirty sock? Yes, it had to be dirty, yes. Well, I'm <laughs> I think we should all start doing that. So this was when I was in secondary school, I think probably year nine. Um, I was waiting for the school bus to take everyone to school. I was on the bus. The journey was around, let's say, half an hour. It was about. It was a good thirty-minute journey to school, and half. This, from the second I woke up, my like guts were churning. I'd obviously eaten something. I don't know what. I can't remember what I had for dinner, but it would have been mum that cooked it. But my tummy was really, really bad. It was hurting. And uh, about halfway through the journey, I did a big fart. It wasn't loud. Nobody heard it. It was really quiet. But um, and everybody could smell it. And the smell was getting worse and worse. You couldn't open the windows on the bus that kept going on. The driver actually stopped the bus before we got to school, made everybody get off, and we had to walk 10 minutes to school because the smell was so bad. Thank you for that, Stephen. <laughs> it's a stupid one. I was on the train, the L train in Chicago, and it come to my stop, right? It's clearly my stop. The little announcer says, it's my stop. The doors open, and I went to go out. And normally, when you get at the train station, the sign tells you the name of the train station, right? So you know where you are. Uh -huh. And as I got to the door, all of the signs were not that train station. And it said somewhere I had never seen before in my life. <laughs> and then I hear this voice behind me go, You getting off? Oh, you getting off? What are you doing? <laughs> and I said, and I went to Frank Spencer, I said, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. There was a film crew there and they were filming <laughs> and they changed all the signs for the station. <laughs> 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 but for a 
split second I thought I was going mental. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you was in Back to the Future. You thought you'd been sent to the future. Or I something. Did. It wasn't even a station on that line. It was somewhere completely different. Oh, oh, that's, amazing. Oh, that, that's amazing. That would have been my dream come true to get off at a platform where they're filming. Let me tell you. As you obviously all know, I've got quite a big dog called Ralph. He's an old time bulldog cross with we think possibly a border collie anyway that's enough about ralph uh and for some reason he i never knew this but coming back from donald's one day to uh, my army base i had to take him through the tube system so he was cool all the way through the tubes but for some reason he was really scared of uh escalators so i've i've, I've got a big bag with me as well and it's getting really hot as it does on the tube show off uh, so, so <laughs> So I pick him up like a baby, uh, but he's, he's sort of like whole front is on me. He's gripping onto me so tight. Um, I was wearing quite an expensive T-shirt at the time. And he's he's ripped that. He's pissed down me. Uh, my nephew Jimmy was there. All he did was laugh. And then I had to go outside the station to get changed and strip down into uh, my <laughs> kind of my boxes, uh, put new clothes on. So I didn't smell like dog piss. Wow! And you, what you had to get changed in public? In public, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was wow. either that or smell a dog piss, and I weighed up my options. Yeah. Well, yeah, poor Ralph must be a nervy, <laughs> nervy old boy. Wonder why that is. <laughs> so I remember one time I was on the tube going from Baker Street to Liverpool Street, I think. And um, as the tube doors shut, uh, it was a very really packed tube. It was like rush hour. And as the tube doors shut, um, it it clipped a bit of my hair or clasped a bit of my hair in between the doors. So um, so it must have looked really weird from from outside because my uh, it was just a tuft of hair poking out. I couldn't move <laughs> until we got to the next uh, stop. But that was really weird. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that happens quite a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> Has that ever happened to you? No, it hasn't. Um, I've been in various cars with bits of clothing hanging out the door, scarves and ends of coats and stuff. And um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's travel or work related, actually, but I did. I was at Tooting running to get the bus one morning for my job in uh, Mitcham and I was running across the, the cars were like real sort of traffic jam going on and I ran I was running all between the cars because they were stationary to get my bus and I tripped over a tow rope this car was towing another car and I didn't see it tripped over the tow rope and in back in the day in the 70s everyone ladies were wearing tights and I had these tights and I ripped all the knees out of them because I fell onto the road and um, had to go to work like that yeah that was um, there was nothing I could do I've I've gotten drunk and woken up at the very last tube stop quite a few times um uh, and and bus stops as well and quite embarrassingly and uh, a few years well used to happen to me a few years ago not so much now but in my party days and um yeah it happened uh, I remember a few years ago and I was so desperate to go for a wee I, I woke up in Cockforsters I think or somewhere like that the end of the line kind of thing and um I was so desperate to go for a wee there's nowhere else to go the whole tube was empty obviously that um so what I did is I I'm really not proud of this but I gathered uh, together loads of newspapers and I, I ended up and put it in the corner of the tube and ended up weeing all over Amanda Holden's face <laughs> she was on the front page. oh so you meant she was on on the on oh. the vehicle the... oh no, no no yeah 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 just on the face wow. and, uh, have you got have you got... I have done that before have yeah, you? I have I have got on a train coming home from work and um instead of getting off at Norbury, I was so tired, I fell asleep and I woke up. It was like the end of the world to me, but it was somewhere in Surrey, somewhere like Surbiton or Tolworth or something. I had no idea where I was. It was the end of the line wow. it was as far as the train went, and it was dark and it was winter, and I got off and I I, I really didn't know what was happening or where I was. And um but I spoke to this really nice porter or whatever or yeah. uh, 
rail guard and, and explain that I'd got, you know, I didn't know where I was and had to wait nearly an hour for another train to go back home and got home really, really late. Yeah, that was um, that ah. was pretty, um, yeah, ah. it's a scary thing when that happens. It is, isn't it? You don't know where you are. So I was on a bus, right? And I got on the bus and every time I get public transport, I always, it always has to be the fucking mental people. So not not the mentally handicapped. I mean, just people that are crazy uh, in a bad way. Anyway, all right. So I got on the bus and there was this guy and I'd sat down and I could see him. He's on the left. I could see him out of the corner of my eye. And I could see him just like <laughs> slopping about. And everything like that. And I'm like, oh, fucking, here we go. I had my mask on because it's over. So under my breath, I did actually say, for fuck's sake, here we go. No one can see me talk. <laughs> I do that a lot now. He was gunning for you. Yeah. And anyway, so he makes his way from the seat that he's on to the floor next to me. <laughs> and he's like, he's like wiggling about. And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to have to make eye contact at some point. He's staring <laughs> right at me, looking up at me. <laughs> <laughs> was he between so your legs? Looked, not yet. No, he was close. <laughs> but he was, he was really close to me. Like really so he was close. lying on the floor. So yeah, he's lying on his back on the floor, and I kind of like just casually looked over, like, "All right, how you doing?" <laughs> and uh, he looked up at me, like he was off his face. I mean, he was—he wasn't drunk. He was just completely on another planet. His pupils were completely dilated. He's just grinning away to himself, like wiggling about on the floor. So I just look away for a bit. But I, after a while, I was like, fucking, I was like, are you all right? I look down and he goes, he looks up at me, he goes, you buy me dinner, I buy you dinner. <laughs> and so I, I just went, nah, that's nah, all right. Nah, and you're so, all right. I've had a sandwich, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I ate three days ago. Yeah. No, it's true. I had had a sandwich that day. Okay. Wasn't a I had lunch oh, later. You wouldn't have taken him for dinner anyway, would you? Yeah, no, so I've had a sandwich. But then he crawls from the floor into the seat in front of me. <laughs> and he's talking. He's talking, but his voice is so low and fucked up, I can't understand what he's saying. So, I'm, so I kind of, I leaned in and I said, listen, mate, I cannot understand what you're saying. I can't <laughs> So he decided the best thing to do is just lean closer. Um, and he's just talking complete gibberish. But anyway, I got off the bus because I got off the bus early, actually, one stop early. I started walking along. I was like, oh, that's funny. The, the bus hasn't gone past me yet. Why would that be? Um, and anyway, I was walking along. And finally, the bus pulls past me and stops at the stop that I'm walking towards. And of course, the fucking guy gets off. And, <laughs> You know what? The thing is, I said to the guy, the driver, when I got off, I said, that guy back there, he's off his head. And he was American. So he said, excuse me, why is he? And I said, the man back there, he's off his face. He's not <laughs> he's off his face. And he goes, he is mentally ill. And I said, no, no, I mean, like, he's off his face. Watch him. Anyway, as, I got, as I'm walking along, the guy, same guy gets off the bus. So I thought, I think the best thing to do... Oh, no! <laughs> I'm just going to walk really fast and completely ignore him. Straight ahead. And I did. And I walked past him. I marched past him. And I could hear him going, <laughs> and anyway, I kept walking. I walked to the, I went and got, got, got some beer, actually. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us for episode three. Uh, everybody say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.